We love our dogs, and our dogs love us. That much is most certainly true. But some dogs are not so easy to live with, even the popular dogs. Let's discover some toxic traits of 10 popular dog breeds. Oh, how can I start off with the cute and sweet little Yorkshire Terrier? They certainly can't be toxic. Oh, but they can. A Yorkie that has been spoiled or not properly socialized can and usually is a shrill, nasty little beast. They are nippy, yappy, and pee all over the house. Of course, toxic traits in dogs tend to have a human cause. A properly trained and socialized Yorkshire Terrier is none of these things. But it's quite easy for humans to spoil and dote on these little dogs and forget to give them the training they need to be well-adjusted pets. In fact, it's quite common in little dogs in general because people tend to see them as not needing training. Don't fall for it. Get into training classes with your little buddy as early as possible. You'll be thankful you did. A good-natured and dependable dog with a knack for hunting and the skill of a sensible guard dog, the German short-haired pointer is also a good family dog that hangs out at the top of the AKC's most popular dog breeds list. They're great dogs, especially if well-trained and well-socialized. So what are the GSP's toxic traits? It all starts with vigorous exercise requirements. If they are not met, things tend to get toxic real quick from there. Rowdiness, aggression towards other animals, chasing, along with a distractible mind of its own, ignoring calls and commands. All this can be avoided by picking a breed that matches your energy level. If you can't or are unwilling to match a dog's exercise requirements, choose another breed or another pet altogether. Even the best training can only go so far if basic exercise needs are not being met. Yeah, you expected Roddy's to end up on this list, but not for the reasons you'd have guessed. Yes, Roddy's have their share of negative traits. The media's made fortunes overemphasizing and demonizing the breed. So, no need to talk about those traits here, most of which can be dealt with through training, socialization, and meeting their less than modest exercise needs. To reiterate what I said about the GSP, the right dog for the right person. If you can't or won't match the needs, don't get the dog. A bigger issue with the Roddy comes from the breed's multitude of health problems, many of which can be serious or fatal. Those who are not financially prepared for the breed can quickly find themselves broke and in debt. Health issues are important when considering a breed. Of course, doing your due diligence when choosing where you get your dog can mitigate the risk of getting an unhealthy dog, but it's not a guarantee. Also, keeping a breed popular does nothing for the overall health of the breed as popularity spawns puppy mills, who have no interest in the breed other than how much it's worth. Poodles. They just look like they have some toxic issues, don't they? Tall, slender, beautiful hair, red flag, a red flag. The standard poodle is one of the smartest and most easily trained dogs in the world. What toxic traits can it possibly have? Okay, everything I said about high energy dogs, bring that here. Serious potential health issues, yep, got those. And skittishness and emotional sensitivity to stress, tension, and loud voices, both of which are prevalent in some lines and can't easily be diagnosed by a potential pet parent when the dog is a puppy. You can avoid some negative traits by choosing an adult dog from an animal shelter or rescue group. With an adult dog, you can easily see what you're getting. If you want a puppy, again, due diligence in researching the breed goes a long way. You should know more about your breeder than you know about your mom before choosing your puppy. According to Michelle Welton's honest advice about dogs, beagles are conveniently sized, handsome, and easy to groom, friendly with people, peaceful with other pets. And with their appealing, soulful expression, it's perfectly natural that many people consider them as potentially wonderful pets. Most of the Beagle's toxic traits come back around to high exercise needs, and there's concern about a lot of potential health issues. One of the bigger problems with Beagle's is his nose. A Beagle is downright nosy in the most literal way possible. 
It is, after all, a hunting hound. They have an insatiable wanderlust, are expert escape artists, are proficient diggers, adept climbers, and incorrigible chow hounds. In other words, you cannot let your beagle out of your sight for even a second, or it will be gone or into something. You're not leaving food unattended on the kitchen counter anymore, because even though your beagle is short, it'll find a way to get to it. All that, and they are not easily house trained, but they sure are cute. If farting is a toxic trait, then I could end this section of the video right here. English Bulldogs have some seriously toxic gas, which, along with loud snoring and excessive drooling, might be enough to be a deal breaker. But those are all a bit superficial reasons to avoid a breed. A super huge issue is sky high vet bills that come along with your bulldog. Your vet's accountant won't know you well. English Bulldog puppies from small scale breeders are likely to cost between $1,500 and $4,000 but the price of owning one is much more due to their poor health and vet costs. To start, your bulldog will almost certainly require specialized dog food. There will be no budget options. Medical insurance is an absolute must for the breed. The $500 to $1,200 per year you pay for it will be much lighter than the out-of-pocket expenses you will incur. If you insist on the dog, get the insurance. On the plus side, there are absolutely no behavioral problems caused by being high energy. Another not so high energy dog is the French Bulldog. It would seemingly make a great pet for a low energy type person. As comfortable in an apartment as it is on a farm, it's more lively than you might suspect from its chunky appearance. It is usually polite with everyone and doesn't bark much. It's a great little dog for those who don't have a lot of space or energy. However, your rugs and carpets are more than likely to be doggy loos. Frenchies are notoriously difficult to house train. In fact, they can be quite stubborn about it throughout life. Can you work around it? Sure, there are fake grass pads for doggy use that you can put down. There's a link in the description. Is it a deal breaker? I guess that depends on whether you have a love for expensive rugs. The dogs in this list were not picked by the number of toxic traits they have, but their popularity. And the Golden Retriever is consistently at the top of almost any popularity list. I guess it's a blonde thing. Well, maybe not. In all fairness, this is one of the finest family dogs in the world. Cheerful, demonstrative, trustworthy with everyone, and forgiving of any mistakes made by inexperienced owners. The Golden is a great dog. It's smart and loyal, making it a top pick for guide and assistance dogs of all types, and it's quite intuitive for novice dog owners. So, what is the Golden's toxic trait? Excessive exercise needs? Yep. Serious health concerns? Yep. Most noticeable cancer. Those Golden logs also do not come without cost. One, the Golden Retriever sheds. A lot. Heavy shedding is an understatement. And it mats and tangles. Your Golden will require lots of brushing and baths because Goldens have a very noticeable doggy odor. But the deal breaker for a lot of people is the mouthiness of the breed. The Golden requires something in its mouth at all times. It is a proficient shoe destroyer, a TV remote chewing, couch cushion destroying monster. You've got to start early training your Golden what it can and cannot chew on. And it must always have something it can chew on around. German Shepherds are highly intelligent, can learn almost anything, and are quite loyal to their families. There's plenty of reasons they are the top military and police dogs. They are easy to work with in that capacity, and they are athletic and strive on challenges. However, there's a whole list of caveats when it comes to introducing a GSD into a family home. Needs plenty of exercise and interesting things to do. Needs careful socialization. Destructiveness when bored or not exercised enough. Potential aggression towards other animals. Constant shedding 365 days a year. Legal liabilities, insurance issues, increased chance of lawsuits. High risk of serious health problems. I love my rescued German Shepherd, but they are not easy dogs to live with all the time. In fact, she can be quite frustrating. Mine, in particular, has an allergy to chicken. 
doesn't seem like a big issue, but finding dog food with absolutely no poultry byproduct in it is quite challenging. If it has the tiniest amount, I end up with a poop fountain. It's not pleasant. And because she wasn't socialized for the first two years of her life, we have to deal with behavioral issues towards strange dogs and people. It's not a deal breaker for us because we are very experienced dog owners. She's a big powerful dog that can completely overwhelm a novice owner. This again brings me back to the right owner for the right dog. Do the research before you choose the dog. Oh come on labs, the most popular dog like ever. Surely they can't have serious toxic traits. Everyone loves the Labrador, it's amazing. Being closely related, everything I mentioned about the Golden is true about the Lab, other than the matting of the fur. They still shed a lot. In fact, perhaps more, since it doesn't mat, and they stink. It's of course going to need a lot of exercise. It would probably enjoy if much of that exercise was in the water, since they love to swim. It's kind of what they were bred to do. Don't be surprised if your lab escapes your yard only to be found in your neighbor's swimming pool. I hope I haven't come across as too negative towards any of these breeds. They are all great dogs, which for the most part is why they are popular dog breeds. But almost all dogs have caveats or toxic traits that we as dog owners need to decide if we can live with before taking on the responsibility to care for a dog for his entire life, provide for his needs, and be a loving friend to. For all the love they give, that's the least they can ask for. If you already have a dog that you just can't handle, please consider consulting a professional dog trainer before considering the option of surrendering a dog to a shelter. Many times they can teach you how to correct your dog's innate behaviors. They aren't toxic after all. Here's a few more videos for you to enjoy. Might as well smash that subscribe button for more fun final facts. And as always, catch you next time.